Yes. <laughs> I thought it was like Butte and Mort or something like that. Oh, Lake Butte It's Dead Butt Lake. <laughs> anyway, sorry. Thank you. Say, say, say the name of the lake again all at once. Beautiful. Okay, nice. I appreciate you. Thank you so good. This is a participatory folk show, okay? I know everybody's been, we've taken great pains to shut you guys up, but, uh, you know, uh, that there's all these signs and whatnot, but you are more than welcome to, you know, uh, cause trouble in this one. That's okay. I'm a folk singer. I'm a professional. Um, and I'm not afraid of any of you, because I feel like if you charge the stage, I could probably take about a third of you. Uh, that's a, both a wet dream and a nightmare. I'm not sure how to that one. Uh, friends, uh, so uh, I figured I'd try to start this set off with an endangered species in the folk music world, a talking blues. Uh, so really what this is, is it's a fight between my ADHD medication and your TikTok attention span. It tells a long ass drawn out story that may or may not have a point. We'll try to get there together. In this story, it requires a little bit of uh, imagination on our part. We have to have the shared imagination that we've been living inside of a van together for about six months. Can we do that? Okay. Okay, all right, so in this particular odd fantasy, friends, you are in the driver's seat and I am sitting side saddle. Uh, so go ahead and roll the window down, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> so we're driving home after many months away. We're about to pass through the city in the state of uh, Missouri, a city called Peculiar, as we do always, right before we hit the loving cradle of those hills of home. Let me tell you, friend, there's nothing odd about the city of Peculiar, Missouri that we're about to pass through. Hell, you can pull out your Google box and look it up for your own damn self. You'll see that even the name has a boring aspect story. It is no uh, Le More Lake or whatever, you know, it's a much more <laughs> innocuous place. Yeah, it's Peculiar is an old railroad town that turned into a suburb that begat an exurb that turned into a certifiable grade A small town anywhere, everywhere, USA. You know, it's the type of shithole town you've already been to before. I have yet to see such a shithole town in Wisconsin, but I know that you've got them out here somewhere because I can tell by the looks of you that some of you like me are from a place like that, right? No place as grandiloquent as the East Coast or as self-important as California, uh, but rather that uh, uh, conglomeration of corn and soybean fields that let people call flyover states, you know, the American Midwest, right? If you happen to be sitting inside of that great big American waiting room called the American Midwest, uh, you might find yourself a little bored, find yourself looking for a little entertainment, living inside of the strange irony that you're inside of a reception area, but there's no ding-dang cell leader reception, right? So in that great big Midwestern waiting room, you look out for a, a coffee table in front of you, and you see a single crusty-ass magazine there, shining like a shrine. Golf Digest, 2001. Men's Health, 2007. Uh, you know, use your imagination, right? We're imagining together. Uh, something with Tiger Woods or Lance Armstrong or Hillary Clinton on the cover. A simpler times, you think to yourself as you reach for the magazine, open up to the centerfold and see a teeny tiny ad for the hamlet of Peculiar, Missouri, proudly proclaiming the town's dumbass little motto, come visit us in Peculiar M.O. It's a town where the odds are always with you. And just as you finish cringing from that, the sub line is, it's not weird if you love it here. <laughs> so friend, pull off the highway. You're driving this rig, remember? Pay attention. God, where do you go? It's flights of fantasy with you sometimes. Look out for that pickup truck. Whoa! People drive crazy around here, Jesus. Hang a Richard here, a Ricky, yeah. I bet you know where we're going already though, friend, yeah. Short of any uh, public amenities, there's about one place you can rest and get a bite to eat after sundown, a little town like this. There's no BLM free campground, there's no YMCA. I've never actually stayed at the YMCA, but I've heard it's fun to stay at the YMCA. Those boys seem nice, they like to stay there sometime. There's no red roof, a blue roof, and Motel 6, 8, or 12, so it's looking like we're gonna have to stay at the Wally World. Yes, sir, we have a standing invitation with the hideous halogen bulbs of the all-night Walmart where an uneasy truce abides between the poor and traveling kind and the mega corporations that deign to keep us from using our bachelor's degrees for the betterment of mankind. You dig? So we're going to step outside of the van and we're going to go in that Wally world and we're going to have ourselves a little party. What do you think? The one-third of your body that is ready, friend, steps out of the car. You're a little tired of my bullshit because I've been going on about this speed all day, so you slam the door. It makes me jump. Try to hold your hand so we can walk into the Walmart like the cute couple that we are, but you just left me off. <laughs> the door slides open. And we step inside. And 
can't you see how everything in here is glowing, friend? How that blast of cool air hit us. How that sweet old man greet us. Oh, friend, I'm no fan of the way every mom and pop store coast to coast has been replaced by a superstore, but I swear to God, that in the place you can get the same pack of cards and to can carry in Alberta, and the same pack of rubbers in Minnetonka and Minneapolis, I might just fall to my knees at the glory and abundance that is the sameness of all things. All things partying away in the last age of a godforsaken Babylon. It's like we're waiting for the oceans to rise. Like we're waiting for New York City and L.A. to get swallowed up by the ocean. Like we're waiting on our own personal and private apocalypse. Well, friend, I think we might need to get the hell out of here. Because <laughs> it seems like I'm having a come apart here in the cosmetics aisle. <laughs> Wondering about the cosmos and trying to ascertain what the right shade of lipstick is to cover up the joy and shame of living your own accursed existence on this godforsaken rock. While we sit here and earnestly consider whether or not we're going to shoplift this coral color of lipstick that we've agreed upon through only mutual and sustained eye contact. Let us also briefly consider how we might be too much for the world, how we might not have done enough for the world, how we might be the last generation of people to have these marvelous middle-class lifestyles, getting anything that we want manufactured out of plastic and sent to us from China directly. Meanwhile, we stare down at a supercomputer that's advertising at us at speeds, at such incredible speeds that it would make our grandparents literally vomit from confusion. In the meantime, a bunch of children over in the Democratic Republic of the Congo or Sudan, or whatever the hell they're calling that country these days, digging for a tiny piece of cobalt that goes inside of the battery, that goes inside of that supercomputer, and most of those children wish they weren't born into this life of suffering at all. But we rely on them to do our suffering for us. And in the meantime, we are definitely just sitting in a Walmart, having a panic attack, definitely not holding hands, definitely just waiting around for the wars for oil to transform into wars for water. <laughs> so we pocket the lip gloss. <laughs> I pocket a second color. I'm about to pocket two handfuls, but you slapped my hand away. A little cheeky like that when you get mad. <laughs> We look towards the door. That ancient bastard is still standing over there to greet us. <laughs> he doesn't give a good goddamn if we shoplift. We rush out into the night, right past him. The door slides open. And we hit the humid air again. And friend, that was when you turned to me. And you pointed upwards to a single shooting star directly in the center of the sky. And you took my hand. And he said, Give me hunger, O oh, you gods that sit and give the world its orders. Give me hunger, pain, and want. Shut me out with shame and failure from your doors of gold and fame. Give me your shabbiest and weariest hunger. Believe for me a little love, a voice to speak to at day's end, a hand to touch in this dark room, breaking up this long loneliness. In the dusk of the day shapes, let's be this one little wandering western star, thrust out from the changing shores of shadow. And for God's sakes, Bubba, let's go back home. Peculiar's always gonna be here, just like a million other little towns. And we're gonna be hitting the highway again pretty soon, anyhow. Maybe you let me drive the last leg of this journey, friend. I'd like to sit and look out the window. Maybe try on this lip gloss. <laughs> I sure wish I knew what we were supposed to do with ourselves. If you get any bright ideas over there, buddy, you better let me know.